uh, Michael Carbonaro was in that film with you. That was one of his first films. Yeah, there was. And Michael, um, Michael Carbonaro. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh connecting to some audio. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you saw my name. Ah! Uh, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> See, oh. the magician. Oh my gosh. Is it real? My brother. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen you since Halloween. Yes, exactly. And then this whole COVID time. What's this now? I, I don't know. I haven't been following the news. <laughs> I know. Michael, make it go away. I know. <laughs> I started it. It was the only way I could get a break. Oh my God. Oh, Were you listening I, the whole time? Were you, how did you know to jump in? You know, I just got a sense inside. I don't know if you were sending out vibes, but I got this sense that I was like, I just knew the password I went in and there I knew it. Yeah. This wasn't planned. Amen. Oh my God, how fun. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Yeah. No, I, have, I haven't been listening. I was like in a dark waiting room. It just said, David will let you in when he's darn well good and ready. <laughs> I had to wait for the right time. What were you talking about? What's happening? All your nudity. <laughs> just, just you. Just me and, we're right? We were talking about you the whole time. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, a real build up. Now the interview gets to start with Michael Carbonaro, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> now we can really get into the business. Oh my gosh. Of the business. I mean, the two of you, you two of you met on, on another gay movie? That's right. Yeah, we met actually doing, because that project took a long time to get off the ground, uh, and it began as a series of staged readings. I guess we did it like three times, maybe, in New York City, right. that they were trying to raise money to get that movie off the ground. So that's where we met. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. And, and that, that's a long time ago now, right? This will be, oh boy. 2006? Was yeah, that? yeah. Well, they, that's when we shot it, but I think it was really 2005. Yeah. Right, it came out It came out in 2006. Right, right. So we were shooting in 2005, but the reading might have been like 2004 or something like that. Right. Yeah. Before that all. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I know that, of course, my, the, I saw you at the Magic Castle perform your magic, uh, and you are just, and you're, you're just, Huge! You're the the it, when, when people think of magicians now, it's Michael. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you very much. I move. Oh my god! But it's you. I think of your name now. When I think of magician, I think of oh, you. rad. Thank you. I'm gonna think of your name now when I think of teddy bears. What's going on? Oh uh, well, listen. I'm alone here and I need somebody to hold on to. Oh my God. Something soft and furry. To... I know, I know what it's like. Yeah, Jonah, you know, is that bathing suit hanging on your door in the background, Jonah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, those are all my masks. Oh, okay. My, my... I, thought, I thought it was like your new two-piece bathing suit ensemble. Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> now, Jonah, I know you sing. I mean, and oh my God, when I heard that you played, um, uh, in Hedwig and the Angry Inch, yeah. uh, and I was thinking, oh my God, because one of my favorite songs from that is um, Angry Little Town. Oh, um, Wicked Little Town. Wicked Little Town. I'm getting angry. I'm getting emotions angry mixed up during inch, this time. And then there's a Wicked Little Town. It's all... The Inch is angry. The town is wicked. The love is an origin. It sure is. Now, have you always been singing too? I mean, beside dancing and acting, Jonah? Uh, yeah, I think it all kind of came into play uh, as a kid and doing a lot of musical, a lot of community musical theater. Uh, we had a, a, a theater that seated like 1,800 people uh, that would get all of the uh, national tours. So we had all the, the, the real Broadway sets would come in. So I got, as a kid, I mean, Peter Pan, I had to learn how to, I had flying lessons for two weeks. And, oh my God. This is in San Fran, right? Yeah, exactly, in the Bay Area. Wow. Yeah, so, oh, we, and, and, you know, Evita, and Bye Bye Birdie, and Music Man, and all of those shows. Yeah, so I, I was singing then, and, you know, continued to, yeah. 
right. now in my own cabaret. In my own <laughs> in my I've own. seen I've seen Jonah singing at Cafe One Hundred One right here in Los Angeles, just sitting at at the bar eating pancakes. We sang together. We did. We sang Peter Gabriel together. Oh my God! So I mean, do you perform too, Michael? Do you sing or? I uh, I actually went to school for musical theater and did a bunch of musicals in high school, but uh, I, I no, I don't really pursue singing, but I think I'm always just sort of singing around the house and stuff. I, I want to. I want to do a project where I got to do some singing. It'll be fun. Yeah. By the way, I haven't, you know, I mentioned it to Jonah, but um, that, those films of yours, I mean, I know it's like back in 2006. You know, I have this, it, it, I mean, they're classics. They, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a movie that people go, oh, have you seen this? And it's like, it's, it's fun. It's, it, it, it was something that a lot of people needed, especially after the American Pies and all those others. And this yeah. went to that other level. No, no. Um, oh my God, I love seeing you guys. I with you. Uh, I mean, I agree. I, it's funny because I haven't seen it. I just was saying, not yesterday, it was yesterday, that we, I was like, let's screen it outside. Like, cause I have a screen and a projector that I could set up and I'm like, let's do like an another gay movie thing outside. Would you come to that, Jonah? Yeah. Oh yeah, you're not, <laughs> you're not taking precautions. Jonah's throwing pool parties. I am not throwing pool parties. Not throwing pool parties. I am not. I, I'm they are. Gonna... They are just simple sex parties. Just oh my god! Very. <laughs> oh, that would be so nice. Oh my god! Should I have a no, pool party? No, that's that. No. I would love a pool party right now. Um, when so you now, Michael, you are are on break from performing, touring the country. Um, yeah, I figured I'd take a uh, break because. <laughs> Because you everything got disappeared. I thought since everything got canceled, I was like, you know what? I'm going to not go to these gigs. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. I was right in the middle of a tour. I literally was flying into, uh, I was flying into Indiana. The plane, like we, it was right at the, right when it's like somewhere in mid-March when it was like things are starting to get canceled, but not everything. I had a weekend of three shows, yeah. uh, you know, three live tour shows, magic shows. And we flew into Indiana, landed, and when we landed, there was a message from my agent on my phone that was like, they're all canceled. We didn't even leave the airport. We all just rebooked our flights back to LA. And that was the last, yeah, that everything has been postponed. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been uh, a ride for sure for everyone, I'm, I, I know. But, you know, and it, and it does kind of come in like a, a strange, strange different levels of mourning in a way because, you know, I knew that things weren't going to pick up again. I was really cynical right out the gate. I'm like, you know what? We're not going to be back up on stage until fall of 2021. I was like, you watch. It's going to be that long. And then, and I think I'm still right. But I, I, just, I didn't really take that in until like a week and a half ago. It really set in that I was like, whoa, this is a bummer. Yeah, thinking about how it how it's going to take the the changes it's going to do to the industry, even if and after it is healed or vaccinated or what, and just in the nature of magic too, it's a lot of audience participation and yeah. bringing people up, and yeah, the whole biz is all shifted. So it's uh trying to stay afloat with positivity, you know. Yeah, well, but we and the audience can still see you on the Carbonaro effect. So that's yeah, the shows are uh, running. Running and, and going. Are the show's um, running. Is the, is the current is there a current season that's ha that's out? No, or no, 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 no. We actually hopefully we could do. I have a lot of really good. We do these like other shows after we shoot the actual footage, which we couldn't shoot new episodes right now. Kind of thank God because I was like ah, but like <laughs> it'd be good uh, because we, we'd be out in public. You know, it's like hidden camera and relating with people at stores and stuff. So that's all messed up. So that, that's not going to be shot now. But the last season we completed, we sometimes do these specials called double takes where I'll show, you know, we'll try the trick on like four different people. And sometimes, you know, they're like all good for different reasons, but we only show one in the show. We don't repeat the different tricks. So we do these double take shows where we show the other ones you didn't get to see. And I could host those literally from home, like in front of a green screen. So we're hoping they want to go for that because that would be kind of cool. I, I, there's like a lot of stuff I want to show because we had some really good right. things happen. So that would be fun if they uh, if they wised up and bought that. <laughs> they need to. 
They need to. How you take one hand and go into the other Zoom box. Yes. Reach. Like that. In my world, I'm I'm patting you on the, I'm scratching your hair. Oh, oh. Yep. yep. Oh, I needed yep. that. I don't know if we all get the same view, like the same Brady Bunch view, but. <laughs> no, we don't, I don't think. But, but your hand sort of went down and up and around. Um, I, I'm so glad you took this opportunity, this COVID season, to do all of that plastic surgery. You look um <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Say, look. <laughs> oh my God, look at that. Oh. By the way, I have- It's a ring light, Joan, it's a ring light. Blows right, it blows it right out. Ring. You know how to do it. You look right in the camera. See, I like to look at the face. I like to connect. And it's so hard when you're looking at that green dot. But, but your lighting is great. Your makeup, everything. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. OK, I'm going to throw out a word to both of you. OK. And see what it, it see the definition. We'll start with Jonah. Um, spirituality. What is your what does that mean to you? Uh, no Googling. <laughs> you know, yeah, I say, need to be Googled. <laughs> what? You want to pull the audience? <laughs> I do. But um, uh, I, I uh, spirituality. I, 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 the first word that comes up is is me. I, I that's so present for me. Uh, the all of everything. Uh, being included, the, the oneness of, of, of us all. There's one of us here. Um, mm. I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I learned something in, 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 uh, in Judaism, the word Adonai, which everyone thinks is, is God in all the prayers, Adonai, Adonai in Hebrew. It's, the word itself is not uh, the name of God. Jews don't believe that, that, that they know the name of God. So what Adonai actually means is the always becoming. That's what we call God, the always becoming. That's how we describe God, which is, you know, living in the moment. That, that's what the world is. It's always becoming. So spirituality mm -hmm. to me uh, connects to that, the always becoming. That's beautiful. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. I'll I am... All tropical cherry sparkling water to that. Ah, I almost a shot. That's our ad for the day. Wow. Now you can you could go with spirituality or you could go, uh, Michael, with emotionality. Um. And if you don't have either, <laughs> well, I've I haven't had feelings since '86, so I'm trying to <laughs> recall the last time I I think I wrote about it. No. Um. Well, first I would say it's funny you said spirituality to Jonah because if you, you know, if this was completely an, an uh, you know, uh, unconnected event and someone stopped me in the middle of the street somewhere and said, name like friends of yours when you think of spirituality, Jonah would be like one of the maybe only three I would mention as friends that just like have spirituality present to me. So that was really cool that you asked him that. He's always, we connect, our friendship is on a, been on a spiritual level for you know, we just, uh, it's a soulmate kind of friendship. So yeah. that was a good word for him. I'll take emotionality because that's the scary one, I think, in a way. You know, emotions are like this free, free ride and roller coaster that it's wonderful to be able to connect to them. Mm -hmm. um, but emotions are, uh, you know, I think about what it means sometimes. It's the, just the visceral reaction that is neither that is always valid mm. it was always it whatever you're feeling it's like to always validate whether it's anger you know jealousy or excitement or love or fear whatever is happening and most of the time it's me having to kind of recompute like I, i'll be feeling jealousy and i can explore that emotionality but why am i feeling jealous about this moment and i could say jealousy is coming from me being afraid that i'm not good enough and i'll like look into what that is but a lot of times emotions are just sort of like you know they are just kind of like the the impression that you get from whatever's happening to you and what's going on around you and it's never wrong um but always good to you know acting upon the emotionality is where you can start to make choices mm -hmm. how am i going to deal with this feeling how am i going to process this feeling 
uh, you know, can I process it? Am I ignoring it? And if I'm ignoring it, maybe I'll be making wrong choices. But emotionality is kind of the raw starting point for where you can be a grown up and make decisions about how to act and deal and process. Especially at this time, too. Oh, I know. Huh. Um, yeah. 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 Um, we have, of course, uh, Performing Arts Studio West here uh, watching this. Uh, not live, but they're, they're watching it when they watch it. But we do have one of the students joining us now. Um, uh, and uh, he uh, actually, his name is John Tucker. Uh, he actually was on the Emmy winning show, Born This Way. And oh. uh, he's coming in to ask you questions, uh, a couple of questions. Um, uh, Are you going to show your face, John Tucker? John Tucker? Show your you're face. showing your face, John, John Tucker. There we John go. John Tucker. Oh, no, that's, yeah, okay, here we go, John. Uh, ask just now try your video. Uh, all right. Am I in the video? Yes, you are. Uh, Wait, okay, try your camera. There yeah, you go. There it is. This is John Tucker. Hey, John. Hi, you got John of Blackman, Michael Carbonaro, John Tucker. Uh, hi, John. <laughs> hi. hi. I'm here. I'm just seeing if I seen the TV show Born This Way. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you love to watch that show. It's a wonderful show. How many Emmys did that get? Oh, God, I got what, like six, seven. Six Emmys, eight. That, that eight? Yeah. Is that what we see on your mantle right behind you? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's not yet. That's uh, something else. They're not in your house. but No, actually, I did this play called Ride or Die. And uh, I think David went to that play. Oh, it was good. It was really good. So mm -hmm. you, you have a question for uh, for Jonah? I do. Okay, which one is Jonah? Jonah is that lovely furry-faced guy up there waving his hands. Oh, okay, so you, Jonah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay, I'm thinking like, which one is it? Okay, cool. So Jonah, uh, my first question for you today um, it will. I, I wrote it down, so I won't forget. Uh, my well, my first, well, my I guess actually I have like, well, I have like two questions though. But I'm gonna do the first one first. Okay. And the first one was, um, how do you feel to be working with people with Down syndrome and with disability? Mm, awesome. Uh, I love working with people. Uh who have disabilities uh, or are part of the disability community. Um, as David knows, I've gotten to uh, come and, and give some workshops and teach. I've even been honored to, to, uh, to speak at a presidential committee for people with disabilities to help support the community um, in uh, more, not only representation, but employment. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was a really great honor. Uh, I find uh, that people with disabilities, uh, and again, I, I put quotes around it because I feel like we all have different levels of disabilities, right? Um, but I feel very blessed when I get to, to work with people with disabilities. Uh, there's not a lot of pretense and people, their spirit, their soul is very present. Uh, and that's always a gift to 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 work with and to be wow. around. That's and I, you know, and I thank you, Jonah, for. I mean, you've done many classes at, at Meet the Biz and come to Performing Arts Studio West. And also, beside that, you you worked on a film, correct? Um, what was the kid? Didn't you work on some the kids of Windy High or? Oh, yeah. I, I've been a producer and a co-director on a documentary um, that's Ooh. still in its process about the kids of Whitney High, um, a, 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 which is a, a sort of a punk band uh, at a school um, in Los Angeles that for uh, children with disabilities. I've also yeah. even with um, my work in PR, I've gone to help shepherd Cinemability, uh, which is a film about the history of 
people with disabilities in film and television, which is something I think is so extraordinary for people to watch, uh, how that representation has shifted throughout uh, the many years. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a I also, I saw you, um, I don't know if you talked about this before I came on the feed here, but, uh, yeah. you know, in your production, uh, you choreographed and were a uh, dancer in the Pippin production, which was done. You're right. You're right. I keep, yeah, I, that was the uh, you know deaf version of Pippin where I got to learn sign language and half the cast was deaf and, um, Wow. And the whole show was signed and sung and got to and magic. That's so it's like we're, we we connected there too because there's magic in that. Yes, I was the magic captain. In that. Yes, oh my God. I saw that performance. That was great. Me too. Yeah. 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 Wow. So then the other question was okay. This is kind of odd. I can't remember my from this question. Um, my. The, <laughs> Because so, so that was my first question. Uh, the second one was, uh, do you ever been just about your, what is it, your, your sex? No, sorry, what is it? Do, do, do you ever been just about, just of your, you know, your skin color, your sexual? Oh, do you ever feel judged? By yeah. Like oh. sexual orientation? Yeah. Uh, we, we got it. Yeah, absolutely. I know. I know. I'm judging you right now, Jonah. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel it, and it shuts me down. Oh no! Oh no. snap, David! Why can't you ask me that question? <laughs> no, 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 Jonah. Jonah yeah, go on, Jonah. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I mean, I certainly have felt. You know, I feel like anybody who is an other. You know, and, and we're all others on, in some way. Um, you are going to definitely feel like you're judged for that. And growing up, being a queer young boy, and certainly being in the industry, the entertainment industry, and mm -hmm. having to show that or not show that, hide that, you know, there's so much judgment around sexuality, as there is, you know, judgment around color or ability or what. Um, so yeah, I definitely uh, am part of the human race in that way and can relate for sure. And and how do you deal with it? How do you deal when, when somebody judges you? Um, I mean, I have to look at whether I there's something for me to learn about that or just to overcome. I mean, you know, what is a judgment? Uh, it's, 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 it's Yeah, it's something to, to find and process to, to not take personally, to see where there is truth that may be there, because some judgments, there are truths to that. Just like in certain stereotypes, there are truths in those. Um, but I, I, I feel like most of that, you got to let it wash over you. Yeah. Move on to the next. Uh. Well, thank you, John Tucker, for coming today. Always. Thanks, John. And hey, <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for, for Michael Carbonaro? Yes, you have to have a question for the, the I mean, this is. <laughs> Which the, one's Michael? This, Michael Carbonaro is the other guy, and it's not the one who's speaking right now, but Michael is the number one magician, period. Oh, okay. Cause you know what? I'm a singer. Okay, I, and I'm also I'm a rapper. So I'm a, and then you know what? Yeah. Did. So you know that. Uh, what? Okay. So basically, my question for you, since you're a magician and everything, um, did you ever direct your first music video? You know, as being a, a as being a magician. You know, it's funny you say that. I I actually would love to direct a music video and incorporate magic into it. I think that, you know, as a magician, I always think that the arts are, every, everyone who's in the arts for any reason are, are, are kind of magicians. They're kind of, they can create magic. You know, when we make cinema, it's a kind of magic. When we're an actor portraying a role, it's a kind of magic. It's an illusion. So as a magician, um, I wanted to put together a music video. Uh, my friend wrote an original song and I wanted to take, I actually wanted to shoot a whole music video inside of like a, a little cabaret theater full of an audience of skeletons. 
Oh. It's going to just be kind of a, she wrote this really creepy song about ghosts and, and not becoming a ghost, you know, in the world. And uh, I wanted to direct that, yeah. Oh, that's really cool. Really cool, you know. I look forward yeah. to seeing that. I never talked to well. I don't know. I never. I mean, I never done magic before. So, I mean, I see. I mean, I see movies. And I magic, bet it's magic. Right? Magic when you rap, isn't it? Oh God! It's like a whole new person. Whole new the, person. the transformation when you become a rapper is magic. Yes, it is. It's serious. I mean, because I've been rapping since I was like eighteen, like eighteen years old. So I know. Yeah. What was the first magic show that you ever done? Were you in a circus? Or? First magic show I ever did. Well, I learned kind of through special effects makeup. I loved I loved horror movies and monsters. You could see some of them in the background here. Like I have these like creepy things up on the wall. There's little oh, wow. monsters over there. There's Jaws you got, you over got there. Your monsters, I got my teddy bears. Yeah, there's a gremlin, picture of gremlin. So I kind of found my way into being a magician from special effects. But my first performing was... Uh, like I started doing birthday parties. Like I would be hired as a magician. When I was 13 years old, I started performing for like kids' birthday parties where I would do a little magic show and celebrate their birthday. And that never stopped. I just kept performing and, and performing as an entertainer for different events. And um, yeah, that was it. 13 years old, first show. Unless you count like in front of family and friends and stuff when I was like eight. But so what makes sense? Okay. So you never stopped doing magic when you got into acting, or did you always want to be an actor and a magician, or did it sort of... Kind of a love-hate relationship with magic sometimes when I, like, was on a... You know, I went to NYU thinking I was going to be the next David Copperfield. I, when I went to school for drama and acting, I still was, like, be, you know, wanted to be a magician. Um, but then when I got into the program and really, like, got absorbed into the acting and I started doing stand-up comedy, I was like, you know what? I kind of want to be an actor, I think. You know, and then I'm like... Maybe I want to be an actor. Maybe I want to be a magician. So it's kind of a battle. And sometimes it's hard to be taken seriously as an actor. If you're like a magician, you're like, oh, really? You're also an actor? Okay, yeah, that's cute. You know, like, so sometimes that would be a challenge. But, you know, magic has opened a lot of doors for, you know, I did a magic trick at my audition to get into NYU. It certainly wasn't my grades that got me into NYU. So <laughs> probably. Um, but yeah, I love, I love, uh, I love all things that are magical about, this whole business and theater, you know, this art and, and this whole industry is a kind of illusion. It's kind of a love of illusion. It's just creating things that aren't really happening and getting to the truth of them and making them seem like they are. And whether that's a great performance in a film or, you know, a monster breaking through a wall in a movie that you believe is real for a second or looks really real. It's all uh, built on some kind of, we're all magicians. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, so you know when I, I want to see some magic. Can you, can you, can you do some magic? For, like, like are you gonna bust? The, are you gonna bust out a rap for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna sit back and watch what happens. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you do some magic right now, I, I can bust out a, a rap. For I you. do. I happen to do now. This is like one of the first things I learned as a kid, and my uncle used to do it. It's a silly little trick, but I happen to do it quite well, and I'm gonna show it to you. It's it's this one with the dis. It's the one with the, the dislodging thumb, you know, where mm -hmm. the, the thumb comes off. Have you seen that? Where you, kind oh. of, you pull your thumb off like this. Look, watch this now. You see how it comes off? Oh, my, no. oh, my God. I mean, that's done well. That's yeah. it's done very well. I can't do it. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can and, that's, and that's what I did to get into NYU. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was it that, one? That, that was it, huh? <laughs> they were like, take him. Take him. He knows He's a god. Uh, so now, John, Mr. Rap. Oh, goodness. Um, okay, I mean, I can come up with a rap um, about... Uh, what can I rap about? I can rap about you guys. Okay. No. Uh, I don't want to start. Okay, let's see. Uh... I gotta put this. Let me see. Uh, I'm just 
No, I'm just no, I'm just chilling right now, just talking to David on um, with the base with his cast members. You know he's so cool and so so high. I love David so 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 much. He got his own TV show, PSW, and that's how we roll every second day. You know it. You know how we roll, how we flow. I'm saying, I'm gonna make. You know what I'm saying? For real, got me. JT from Born is Ray. We got, uh, you know, everybody don't play. I don't care what you guys say. You know, I'm not saying dumb, but I'm going to let you know. Let you know who's the wizard for real, because you know what? You know for real, uh, JT on the microphone. I'm saying, is that my You know what I'm saying? For real, we keep it real. 100%. You know how we do it. That we give for certain. You know how we roll, how we flow, how we roll. I'm saying, yo, no, no, here we go, yo, yo. Big yeah! Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, yeah. if this was a rap battle, you you definitely beat my thumb trick. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Uh, but yes. I, I have that one more great. question of you. One more question of both of you. When are you going to work again together? Jonah and I? Yeah. What are you doing at five? <laughs> <laughs> Coming over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great question. And it's funny, you know, anytime I'm working on something, Jonah's, I, I always call Jonah to connect in some way. Jonah's worked on the TV show before. Um, I did this really cool performance of Edgar Allan Poe's Telltale Heart, and I had Jonah come in and help coach and uh, work on that show. So, yeah, I mean, a, gosh. I, I, I worked with... Um, Michael on his in, on his stage show. I was your buzzing bee. You were. You played a bee in the stage show. As well in that moment. So you've officially been a magician's assistant. Mm-hmm. But it was never cut in half. Not yet. Not yet. But you were I Vanna White. Here right through me, Carbonaro. Yeah, I'm gonna cut you in half, all right. Oh God. Cut it up. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank that's you, really good. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. This was fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thanks, John Tucker. Thanks, Michael mm -hmm. Carbonaro. Thanks, oh, Jonah Blackman. Yes, yes John Tucker. Yeah. Thanks, John Tucker. You're welcome, most definitely. Michael, thank, thank you for the surprise. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, oh, David. Uh, Jonah, love you. We love had you magic all. to do. Uh, from his hit TV show, The Carbonaro Effect, magician Michael Carbonaro is coming to a city near you for an electrifying live performance that families nationwide cannot stop talking about. Jam-packed with audience interaction, hilarious video clips, and his signature blend of bizarre antics and mind-blowing magic performed live on stage. Don't miss out on your chance to feel the effect of Michael Carbonaro live. Believers, you can close your eyes. You know what's so funny? Because you know, because she's doing magic and everything. I do have a niece, and her birthday—I don't know her birthday it is. I might have to book you for a. I might have to book you for a magic show. My calendar is wide open. <laughs> All right, I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs>